Welcome back to part two of modeling a drift trike in SOLIDWORKS. If you'd like to um, download any of the actual models, you can go to GrabCAD. They're available there in various formats, including SOLIDWORKS, STEP, Power Solid, and ASIS. So this is part two, where we're going to actually model the, uh, the actual forks. Uh, I've already modeled the frame in a previous part, and then we've also got the cell on the rear wheels to do, which will be done in subsequent uh, webinars. During this fork construction, we're going to be looking again at some of the layout sketch techniques. Uh, we'll also need to use multi-body design, and we're going to be using the center line loft and shell features. Just like before, I've been trawling the internet, and I managed to find a set of forks drawings, actually for a drift trike. It's a little bit interesting, so if we zoom in, we've got a circular tube at the top that then comes down and uh, gets swaged out into an oval shape. And at the bottom here, it's quite a strange uh, hub because it's designed to take a, uh, a unicycle uh, axle through the centre. So we're going to need to do some way of kind of joining these parts together and making this technique work. So let's go into SolidWorks and have a look. So in true Blue Peter fashion, um, I've started with a layout sketch that I've already created. If you look at our reference drawing that I found on the internet, you can see how this sketch has come about. So effectively it's the center line of our forks. If we zoom in at the bottom, I've created a little bit of a rectangle. This is the actual hub shape, because I want to get this swage tube to meet at that point. Now I need to create the profiles through my tube. So to begin with, I'm going to create a plane at a point through that line. Then we can draw a circle on this new plane just kind of snapping this onto this center line. The, the top half of this design, it's just it keeps the same thickness, so we're just going to do a sweep. So basically, I just need to have my uh, my sketch profile, so this circle. Now, if you look at the drawing, it was uh, 31.8 uh, millimeters. I'm not doing the wall thickness here. We're going to shell this out afterwards. Now, if we do a sweep, now I can sweep this, and I want to choose which part of that layout sketch. So a simple right-hand mouse button and use the Selection Manager, and I can just pick those two top pieces of my sketch, and that gives me my sweep path. That done, that's the top of our fork. The lower half of our fork, we're going to use a loft. So again, I'm going to need another sketch. So let's pick the point, pick the line, and then create another reference plane. So it's going to create as a plane parallel to that point at that line. Now this is where it gets swaged down, so we're going to need to sketch an ellipse on here. Now to stop my lips from twisting about, I'm just going to do a coincident, uh, make two points horizontal, sorry, and then we'll put some dimensions on this. Now again, off the drawing, I know that it gets overlies to 16 by 34. With that sketch completed, we can now do a loft. So remember the basic rule for lofting, try and pick within the same area for both profiles. So picking within the uh, same kind of vicinity. Now I want to get it to uh, kind of blend in nicely, so I'm just going to change our start tangency to tangency normal to faces. Now we can see we've got a nice blended start of our design. So we're kind of getting there, that's this one half or one kind of blade of the fork complete. Let's just check out at the bottom here where it meets the axle. Now, because I've done that rough layout sketch, I can see there that the blade isn't actually going to quite meet up nicely on the end of the hub. So let's just bring it in a little bit more. So effectively, in manufacturing, they just pinch this in a tiny bit more. Uh, and that's okay, but we've now got a bit of a gap on one side and it overhangs on the other. So let's just update our layout sketch. If I delete the relationship that uh, just kind of keeps that in the center, then what I can do is just put a little dimension on, on the bottom here of my blade and effectively nudge it over to the right. Exiting the sketch means that that loft updates, and we've now got a nice even gap on either side. So what I'm going to do now is I've just got a little sketch here, nothing too fancy, just of our hub. So I'm going to extrude this on a mid plane. But here's the important thing: I'm wanting to make sure I use the uh, don't use the merge result. 
So I want to keep this as a separate solid lump so that we can then either shell it or modify it or mirror it. But I certainly don't want to add it onto that blade at this point. Let's show the power of multi-body modeling. So here I'm just doing a right hand mouse button and isolating out just the blade of the fork. So I can then go in and I can shell this by selecting both the faces of the tube and giving it the wall thickness that we need, so 1.4 millimeters. And that is only going to shell this body. It won't shell that uh, axle cap that we created. Coming out of that, we can then do the same thing again. I'm going to isolate just the axle part. Now this needs a couple of fillets on it first. So I'm going to use a full round fillet just to blend off the end part by selecting all the three outside faces. And then we just need a couple of fillets just on this uh, kind of to blend out the top piece. So picking the internal edge. And then finally the external. So this is actually hollow. This kind of cups the bearing. So again, it's going to be another shell, just picking the internal faces and shelling this out to one and a half mil. I can now mirror this to the other side. We're going to be using the mirror body command. And we'll use the merge result. And because we're in the isolate mode, that will just join those together and not to the blade of the fork. If we show everything together, here's the problem that we've got is that blade comes inside the axle cap. So I need to cut that away without affecting the rest of my design. I also can't just do a straight cut because it kind of wraps around where those fillets go. So what I'm going to do here is just use a little bit of a surface modeling trick. I'm going to do a surface knit on the top three faces, so the two filleted faces and the top curved face. And then if it goes straight to a cut with surface, it will keep that newly created patch of surfaces, surface knit one, and it will use that as a cut, and I can use that to cut the blade. Now it's still two solid bodies at this point, so we're going to use a combine tool and select both these lumps together and add them together. So this turns it into one solid shape. So with one solid shape, we can now then put a fillet between the two and just treat as if it was welded at that joint. Okay, so that is definitely that one side completed now we can get on with the rest of the design. So we need to create our main headset tube. That's just going to be a simple revolved fin. So starting off just with our center line using our origin as, as previous. And then a rough outline of the actual sketch of the shape that revolved. It's just a little step where our bearing goes. And normally with these kind of things I tend to over exaggerate it because it makes life easier in sketching. And of course we can just use our dimensions on afterwards to tidy it to the right size. I do need to get this positioned um, relative to our uh, original fork design, but I haven't got any geometry here to use. So that's simple. What I'm going to do is just show our original layout sketch again, and then that would help us to locate this actual headset. So simple show, and then we can just do a dimension just to offset it from our kind of our center of our fork to the bottom of our headset. Okay, let's revolve this now. And because it's an open profile, we'll have the option here to actually use a fin profile. Uh, I don't want to use the option there to close it up. I'm just going to give it a, a thickness, just of a couple of mil, making sure that we're actually on which side of that sketch or on the inside of that sketch. And I can give that a tick. Now, as we saw in the preview there, the actual leg still goes inside our main headset tube. So I need to tidy that up. So all I'm going to do is reuse that same sketch. So just select that from a feature tree and just go straight to Revolve Cut. Again, this is where we can choose which body we want to chop. In theory, it shouldn't chop the top one anyway. Pick this and then we're going to do a Revolve Cut Fin again. Now what this will actually do is it will dissect that blade into two pieces. 
So I can just say all I want it to do is keep the external piece. So that's trimmed it nice and flush to our headset tube. Okay, so the thing I need to finish off is there's just a little uh, clearance cut that goes underneath the headset tube. So basically that's just a circle. I'm just going to line this up with the rest of our geometry. And then a couple of dimensions to suit. And then we'll do an extruded cut through all in both directions. That just kind of gives us a little bit more clearance of the tyre. And then we can mirror our blade from one side to the other side. So again, similar to when we did the uh, the axles, we need to, we've got three separate solid bodies. So I'm going to combine these together. So it turns it into one solid fork. But I'm only doing that just because I want to put a fillet on to it's kind of simulating the world again of the actual fork design. And there we have it, we have our finished fork. I hope you've picked up some tricks and tips as I've been going along. If not, it might just be interesting to see the, the way I've attacked this project. Uh, just remember we've got more parts of this, we've got uh, the wheels and the, uh, the seat design coming up so they're kind of more curvy and plastic inspired so some different techniques are being used there and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you, bye bye.